a victory with 2,500 people scattered around the world. Well, at their next meeting, they say they do plan to raise a glass or two. Michael? John Mann, thanks. Our next guest would agree with those critics who say Al Gore's documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, stretches the truth about global warming. Joining us now is Marlo Lewis, a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute. He's also written several working papers debunking claims made in Al, Al Gore's film. Uh, one assumes, sir, you don't think he's deserving of this award? I don't, Michael. The reason? Well, you mentioned uh, world hunger and water shortages, and I'm afraid that the policies that Al Gore is promoting, that the Nobel Committee is celebrating, would in fact increase poverty in the world and make it much more difficult for people in Africa and Asia and Latin America to achieve adequate supplies of clean water because basically what Al Gore and the whole global warming crusade is advocating is an energy diet for an energy starved world and this is not a recipe for peace this is a recipe for global instability and strife you, you could say that parts of the world are energy starved others are, are far from it I uh, you know you talk about the Western world the developed world uh, plenty of energy there a little bit too much of it being used according to a lot of, of the science world well some people say a little bit too much of it is being used by Al Gore one of whose mansions But you see, Al Gore really needs those mansions and those limousines and those private jets in order to accomplish his purposes. And I see nothing wrong with that. But for some reason, he begrudges the rest of us uh, when all we want to do is fill up our tank with gasoline. And, and you ask the average American, you know, if he's paying too little for gasoline, and he'll tell you no. So uh, gasoline is not as plentiful as, as, as even in the United States we'd like it to be. So you know, I mean, in, in, in all fairness here, we should say that the Competitive Enterprise Institute, where, where you're based, is, uh, has been uh, sponsored in, in many ways by the oil industry. So, I mean, everybody's got an agenda here, haven't they? That's right. There are honest people in this debate, but very few honest workers, by which I mean people who, by virtue of their professional position, are completely above any potential conflict of interest. But that goes for Al Gore as well. Because as many people are saying, this is the greatest prize and distinction that can be conferred upon anyone in the world. I wonder how that might play out in the Democratic Convention here in the United States. <laughs> one, one, one ad from your organization ended with the line, carbon dioxide. They call it pollution. We call it life. Uh, are you still in favor of more energy consumption, not less? Yes, as I said, you know, uh, about 1.6 billion people on this planet have never flipped the light switch. 2.4 billion people still rely on primitive biomass to cook their food and heat their homes. This is literally a lethal condition. This puts millions of lives in peril every year. And the only way to solve that is to make the planet energy richer, not energy poorer. And, and you... And you, you, you... You don't believe that climate change has got anything to do with what's going on in the world? Isn't what Al Gore's doing a wake-up call regardless, and that can't be a bad thing? Uh, of, of course I believe that climate change is real. But <clears throat> my point is that Al Gore's wake-up call is actually diverting uh, vast resources, and I'm not just talking about trillions of dollars that would be needed to implement the Kyoto Protocol over the next couple of decades, but public attention and political will from much more urgent threats to human welfare, like waterborne disease, like indoor air pollution in poor countries, like HIV, AIDS, malaria. All of these things get pushed to the back burner because Al Gore has made global warming the number one preoccupation of the policymaking community around the world. That is not helpful for world peace. All right, with the, with the contrary view, appreciate your time. Marlo Lewis uh, Thank you for having with the Competitive me. Enterprise Institute. Thank